Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today I'm going to be giving you some romance recommendations based off of the forced proximity trope. Baby, baby. This is one of my favorite tropes ever. I adore this trope and so hopefully you can read some new favorites if you love this trope as well and haven't heard of some of these books. So if you didn't know what forced proximity means, it basically means that the couple is forced to be in a small space together, to live together, to be stuck somewhere together and throughout their being stuck together it like kind of forces them to reveal their feelings for each other most of the time so let's get right on into these recommendations first i have frigid by jennifer l armentrout this is a snowed in romance and it is a friends to lovers romance so this is about sydney and kyler they are both in their 20s early 20s i think they're both 21 and they've been friends ever since they were little 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 children they go on a ski trip i think to vermont or somewhere around that area um for winter break or for some kind of school break all their friends that they invited couldn't show up like couldn't make it because the snow was so bad so the both of them are stuck together in this cabin and they're forced to finally maybe admit their feelings that they've had for each other for a very long time. <laughs> I thought this was great. I adore Friends Delivers romances, of course, and I adore also the um, snowed in trope. So the forced proximity here is they are forced to stay in this cabin together for a very long time and kind of like help each other live during the snowstorm. Next, I have The Highlander's Forbidden Bride by Donna Fletcher. This is the fourth book in the Sinclair Brothers series, the last book in the series, and I really recommend that you read these books in order because the hero of this story has like a mystery involving him throughout the entire first three books and so you need to read the first three to like kind of understand what's going on in the fourth. But I'll give you a short rundown of um what happens in this one specifically our heroine um carissa she is the daughter to the um rivaling clan of the sinclair brothers clan so like the sinclair the sinclair brothers they have their own clan but they have a rivaling clan and carissa just happens to be the daughter of the chief of that clan or the what is it a chief what's his name um clan leader whatever the name <laughs> the reason that they're rivals is because ronin the hero of this story who you've been reading about for a couple of books now was tortured by this man in his clan and so for for a while he's been trying to find the woman who nursed him back to health while he was in that clan um and he has been thinking about her non-stop um but then he runs into carissa kind of like kidnaps her and keeps her in an abandoned cabin together he wants to seek retribution for what happened to him and what he believes happened to the woman who saved him who he believes his name is hope he thinks that carissa killed her when in actuality carissa may or may not be hope so ronan kidnaps carissa to like get revenge on what he assumed happened to hope and so by kidnapping her he brings her to this cabin and they stay in the cabin alone for quite a while and they have to share a bed together um they have to just share this tiny little living space together and they're forced to like actually kind of talk to each other and get to know one another and yeah he may or may not realize that uh there's more to Krista than meets the eye and that she is more than just his rival's daughter so I adore this one. This one is like one of my favorites in this series for sure. But I really recommend again to read the first couple books before you dive into this one. Next I have Misadventures of a City Girl by Meredith Wilde and Shell Bliss. So this is about Madison and Luke. Madison decides to take a vacation to Northern California along like the mountainside because she's like just gotten over a divorce and she just wants to take some me time to herself so madison decides to take a little bit of a hike next to the um resort that she's staying in in the mountains so she goes up the mountains and she finds this um i forget what they're called but like it's the natural hot tub spring kind of thing um so she goes in there she's swimming in it whatever and of course she has no clothes on um and then luke just so happens to walk by because the spring hot tub thing is right next to his cabin that he lives in in the middle of the mountains and he kind of sees her in a compromising position and the two of them kind of get hot and heavy <laughs> um and it just so happens that there's a snowstorm very soon and so they both get snowed in in his cabin and they decided to have some fun together while they're in this cabin so again this is another snowed in trope i love that trope <laughs> Um, and I feel like this one was really fun. Um, I had a lot of fun reading this. So after the two of them hook up and like the storm has dissipated, the two of them have to like think about whether or not they can like actually be together or whether they want to at all because Luke has some PTSD and he does not do well in cities. And that is where, what's her name? That's where Madison is from. And that's where her job is. And so they have to like talk to each other and realize whether or not they can actually like even be together because of the way they live so next of course there's birthday girl by penelope douglas <laughs> a lot of people know about this book um but if you don't 
This is about uh, Jordan and Pike. Jordan is dating this kind of like douchey dude, okay? He is not helping her pay rent in their apartment. He is not paying attention to her literally at all. But anyway, they can't pay rent. And so Jordan and her boyfriend go to stay with her boyfriend's dad for a little bit to get on their feet. And her boyfriend's dad just so happens to be Pike, who is a man she met a couple of nights ago and she kind of like flirted with a little bit and had like felt a connection with. But of course, that is her boyfriend's dad, so she's not gonna do anything, obviously. But since they're living in this house together, they kind of like have to run into each other often and they're forced to relive memories they've had together that one night and to think about each other constantly. Um, there is no cheating in here, so just by the way about that. Um, but the two of them do start up a relationship at some point, obviously, because this is a romance book. This is like a classic in the romance community. Everybody's read this one and everybody loves it, or most people love it. And so yeah, I really like this one. They're forced to live together for quite a long time, so that is the forced proximity part in here. <laughs> Next, I have My Darling Duke by Stacey Reed. This, of course, is a historical romance. So this is about Kitty Danvers, and she is the oldest of a couple sisters, but her sisters are not not able to go out into society until she has a fiance or a husband, you know? And so she's realizing that she might not ever find a husband, and so she's just gonna make it up. She's gonna make a rumor up that she is engaged to the society's recluse, um, the Duke of Thornton, I think. Yep, the Duke of Thornton, Alexander is his name. Um, she makes this rumor up that she is engaged to him because he's not actually gonna come out into society. No one has seen him for years, he's a recluse. He's not gonna know that she's making up this rumor, but she does this for the love of her sisters and she wants her sisters to have an amazing lives, you know? And so Alexander gets a whiff of this and he's like, hmm, who is this woman where she would like dare to assume that we are engaged and to make this rumor, I'm gonna go meet her. So he goes into society to meet Kitty and she is in shock and she like pulls him aside and she's like, I am so sorry. I didn't mean to cause you any trouble. I just wanted a better life for my sisters. And he's like, okay, you know what? I think I actually like you. So um, we're actually gonna, I'll, I'll play along with you. You know, I'll play along with you. I'll pretend to be your fiance for a little bit and we'll see how this goes. And so they pretend to be engaged to one another for quite a long time in this book. Alexander in here was in an accident and so he's wheelchair bound and he has scars on his face and all over his body. And so he's very self-conscious about that and he's been told by doctors that he is possibly never going to be able to walk fully again. Um, so he's struggling with that. And so the forced proximity part of this book is the two of them end up going to a remote cabin together and they get stuck in this cabin with the two of them just by themselves. When they stay in this cabin, they finally let off a little bit of steam they've been holding off for each other, you know? Um, so it was just hot, it was fun. I really like this one. I think there's also a one bed trope in here. So um, this is a great forced proximity to me. It's not the whole book that's forced proximity like one of the other books I've talked about, um, but there is a chunk of this book where this does take place. Next I have Gifting Me to His Best Friend by Katie Robert. This is another snowed in romance. This one is so fun. This one's so fun, it's so hot, I love it. So I don't remember the characters' names on this one, um, but it's about a hero and a heroine. They are married and then they have a best friend. The guys have been best friends for forever, but the three of them are like a best friend group, okay? And they go on vacations together like all the time. Um, and so they get snowed in on their skiing vacation, I wanna say, um, around Christmas time. And the three of them finally like reveal their feelings they've had for everybody, you know? So it's an MMF romance and Holy crap, I loved this one. It was fun, it was hot, like I said before. <laughs> and if you want like a good old time, a good book to read during the Christmassy season, this one is definitely one to pick up. Next, I have Always Only You by Chloe Lise. The forced proximity part in here is not like a big chunk of the book, but it is in this one, and I will make up any excuse to talk about this book because this book is perfect. <laughs> this is about Ren and Frankie. Ren is a hockey player and Frankie is the like social social media manager for the hockey team. Frankie has a chronic illness called um, rheumatoid arthritis and she walks with a cane and she also has autism. Um, so there's a bunch of great diversity in this book. I love it. And then Ren is like a sweet salmon roll hero. I adore him and he has been waiting for Frankie for forever. Um, and so in this book, Frankie's apartment gets broken into and she has nowhere to stay. And so Ren is like, hey, come stay with me until your apartment gets like all fixed up and the windows get fixed and the door locks get fixed and everything like that. And so she goes to stay with him for a couple of days. So they're forced to live in the same house together. And there may or may not be a scene where um, they accidentally run into each other when one of them is getting out of the shower. <laughs> It is very fun. I love it. I just adore Ren. He is like one of the ultimate book boyfriends and then Frankie ultimately completes him. I love this. I love them. One of my favorite books of the year for freaking sure. Please read it. Next, I have When She Belongs by Ruby Dixon. This one is a chunker, so just be aware, but 
it is so worth it. This is like a slow burn grumpy sunshine romance that is just so good. It's one of my favorite alien romances. The audiobook for this is fantastic. That's how I listened to it. I did not read this whole thing. I listened to the audiobook for sure. This is a romance between Sophie and Jerok. Sophie is a human woman and Jerok is a grumpy alien man who has experienced trauma with war and battles and um, part of his body is made from cybernetic limbs because he's lost a few limbs and lost parts of his body you know you have to read the corsairs books before this one or else you won't really understand kind of what is going on by some means i'm not gonna tell you how sophie gets stuck with jerok on jerok's asteroid jerok lives on a abandoned asteroid all by himself and sophie has been asked to live there with him for a short period of time and so she goes to live with him and he is this grumpy guy who just wants nothing to do with Sophie. He just wants to live his solitary life and not have anybody to mess with him. But then Sophie there just changes his world up, changes it up. She's the sunshine, bubbly, book-loving woman that <laughs> will do anything to like poke fun at Jerok or to um, kind of like get on his skin, kind of like act bratty towards him a little bit. Um, but she is totally like a sunshine too. And so this is a grumpy sunshine romance. And so the two of them are forced to live on this abandoned asteroid with one another with no other company. All they have is each other. So they're forced to live together essentially. This romance is like so believable for it being an alien romance, y'all. Um, please read this one. I love this one and I need more people to read it. And not a lot of people have read this one and it is really good. But again, you have to read the first books in this series to fully understand what's going on. So please, please, please read these books. <laughs> Another Ruby Dixon that I have is called Adiron by Ruby Dixon, obviously. Um, this is the first book in the Corsair Brothers series. So it's the book that takes place after the Corsairs series. It's the Corsairs Brothers series. Um, you do read about them in this book, but you have to read those books before you read this one. I want to say it'll make the best reading experience for you. So this series is about Adiron and his... Um, brothers. He has two brothers and so each book is about one of them in this series. And so they are space pirates and so they're on this mission journey to find this certain space treasure, this abandoned big spaceship that apparently has a bunch of treasure on it. And so they end up finding it but uh, when they board the ship there are actually human slaves living there and um, the human slaves end up commandeering them and the ship and end up like knocking them out and taking over that, like taking over their ship and taking over them. And one of the human women, a part of the group that does this is Jade. She's like the leader of the women. Right when Adaron sees her, he is smitten. He is smitten, he is smitten. Um, by some means you read about in the book, the two of them are stuck on the spaceship together alone and they have fun. They have fun together. They learn about each other. Adaron gives me golden retriever vibes for sure. Um, <laughs> and he just swoons over Jade and will do anything for her. And oh, it was so sweet. I love this one. And lastly for this video, I'm going to be talking about People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry. So this book is about Poppy and Alex. And when they were in college together, they were like best friends and they would go on vacations with each other all the time. But in current day, they are not friends anymore. Um, and you don't know why you have to read about it throughout the book. It gives you the story about why they're not friends anymore. The more you read, because the book flip flops back and forth from present time to past time um, to when they were friends. Poppy is kind of like down in the dumps and she's like, I'm not really happy in life. The last time I was truly happy was when I was going on these vacations with Alex. And so she finally, after a couple of years, ends up messaging Alex and is like, hey, do you want to go on one last vacation with me? And so they do it. This forced proximity part in here is the fact that the two of them have to stay in a hotel room together with one bed for quite a long time. <laughs> And it is funny, there's many laugh out loud moments in here. And I just thought this Friends to Lovers book was great. Um, I loved the flashback scenes. Normally I don't like flashback scenes, but this one was great with those. And the forced proximity part was just hilarious because the the uh, hotel room that they're staying in is honestly just a disaster. <laughs> so they get in a lot of shenanigans, a lot of things happen to them. It's just a grand old time. So there you have it. Those are 10 books that have the forced proximity trope. Please let me know down below if you have read any of these books or if you plan to. And if you have made it this far, leave me a house emoji because a lot of these people were stuck in the same house together. So um, yeah. Anyways, thank you all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.